Hi YouTube. What I thought I'd do in this video is something a little different than what you find in other colored pencil videos and that is organizing your color pencils according to the color wheel. That's right. You know some pencils are different colors but they fall in the same spectrum of the color band and we call that a color wheel which I'll show right here and so I'm going to show you how you can easily organize your Arteza 72 colored pencils, which are the ones that I'm going to use, and organize them according to the color wheel. So let's get right to it. Now, there, there's a couple of ways we can do this. One way is that if you have a scanner, to uh, put the Arteza 72 color pencils uh, tin on your scanner and scan the back of the tin. And you get an image much like what you see here. And then from here, we're going to go to a website that uh, we can then uh, use an eyedropper on these colors to get a value that we're going to need to know where these colors fall on the color wheel. Okay, so for example, I located a website here uh, by doing a search. Uh, I searched on uh, Get HSL from Image, and there was a few places I could go to. Here's one, pinetools.com image-color-picker. Uh, I don't know if it'll always be here when you look for it, but uh, you can always just do a search as suggested. Anyway, then you just choose file and I'm going to select the image I scanned in and there it is. Now we're going to be interested in this area right here and uh, here where it has the H value. Okay, this is actually in degrees. So this would be 58.1 degrees. I would not worry too much about the decimal point, point 0.1. So in this case, we'll just call this, let's say 58. And over here, it gives the lighting value. But for right now, we're just going to focus on the degrees. And what that basically is, is here, let's say, represents the color wheel that I showed you earlier. Okay, but it's showing it in a linear, straight line, as opposed to looping back around and starting over again. And wherever that color is that you are selecting falls somewhere within this spectrum. Well. If you start from one end, that would be zero degrees, and then all the way to the other end would be 359 degrees, and that would represent a full circle, which is 360 degrees. So we go from zero to 359, and that value would be shown right here. So you're going to want to write these values down for each one of these colors. So for the first one, which is the ivory, I'm going to click right in there. It gives you the hex code here if you want to jot that down, that's fine. Shows you where it falls within that uh, color band. And it gives you the value. In this case here, it tells us 77. So I'll write down 77. Then I'm going to continue on to the next color. And that one's 42. And I'll write that down, 42. Now, if this is a little too small, these little color squares here, uh, it has these um, magnifying uh, items here, and I believe you can just go ahead and click on it a few times, and you can just balloon it up a little bit, and then go back to your selection uh, crosshairs to continue. Okay, so for the third one, I'll select that and write it down, 54. I'll go to the next one, and uh, that one is 34, and so forth and do this all the way uh, to the end so that you have the hue code, which is what this H represents, is the degrees of where that color falls within the color wheel. Now, the way that I would prefer doing it takes a little longer, but it's a little more accurate, is to create your own color swatch uh, sheet. 
And uh, that's what we're going to do right now. And then we're, we will load it up into this uh, website once again to get those numbers. Okay, so the other approach is to make your own color swatches. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this Arteza watercolor pad uh, for that purpose. It's a pretty heavy board stock paper. And uh, I'm going to use the, the smooth side of the paper uh, to draw these color swatches. And so uh, let's get right into uh, doing that. Okay, now that I've completed my color swatches chart, I'm going to upload it in this website again, the same one I used previously. And I'm going to bring up those swatches, and you can see they're right here. And again, if you need to zoom in, you can just do it like this. And if you want to move things around, you can do it like that. But I'll go back to the crosshairs, and now as I click in each one of these colors, these are the actual color pencils themselves, the samples that I uh, scribbled onto the drawing paper. And now I'm going to go ahead and start taking these uh, degrees here. In this case, you can see it's, it says 60. And then the next one says 53. The next one is 45, 43. I'm rounding the numbers because they're in decimal, uh, 39, and so forth. So I'm going to go through and mark down each one of these, and then I'm going to show you, uh, again, why that is important. Okay, now that we've done that, uh, what I'm showing you here on the left is the original color wheel that I had displayed earlier on in the video. And you can see that it has the names of the colors printed all the way around the wheel. On the right is the same exact color wheel, except I removed the names of the colors and replaced it with the values of their hues. And in this case, I used my Photoshop application, but you could use a color picker from many applications of paint programs or the color picker tool that I have already uh, demonstrated that is online or any others that you find online, and there are many. Anyway, so you can see that as you go around this color wheel, the degrees go higher and higher all the way up until it's a full circle. Now, in this case, it shows 358 for red, which is right in that area of 358, 359, 360, which is the same as zero. And that's usually our starting point and ending point is at the reds. And then it goes around clockwise, and you can see it goes up to 37, 57, 80, and so forth. So those numbers that we wrote down for our color pencils are going to fall somewhere along uh, this color wheel. And this is how that we are going to go about organizing our pencils in order of how they fall within this color wheel. Okay, now that I have gone through and noted each one of the hue numbers on my color swatches chart here. I went ahead and I organized my Arteza 72 color pencil set in the order based on that color wheel, based on the degrees of the color wheel using these numbers. And this is what I ended up with. These colors that you see here are in order of how they fall on that color wheel. So starting from the reds area here, 
going all the way through get to the greens, into the blues, and then back into the reds again. Now, one thing I found very interesting in this ex little experiment here, I think you're going to find very interesting. If I was to eyeball where these pencils would go as far as along that wheel, I would never have arrived with this order of pencils. And I'm going to give you a really good example. Take a look at these two pencils right here for just example. There are many others, but here's two examples right here. And I'm going to pull these two out. Actually, it's these two here I want to pull out. And I'm going to put this tray out of the way here. And take a look at this. One is called, for example, Magenta A025. The other is Pink Macaroon A083. Now, if you look at these two, you can clearly see that they are different colors. And I'm going to bring some drawing paper over here, for example. And let me zoom in. Okay. This is magenta. And this is the pink macaroon. All right, clearly two different colors. Yet, I have them both right next to each other on my tray. And the reason for this is because this had a value of 356. I'm gonna write that down. It's 356 degrees, so you know it's it's there in the red area of the color wheel. And the pink macaroon is also 356. And that's why they are both in the same exact location in my tray. Yet if I was to eyeball this, I would have had this color probably somewhere around the, oh, yellows to oranges, oranges to red areas, somewhere around there where it was uh, lighter. Because it, in my eyes, I would see it, you know, maybe, maybe close to this pencil here. Or maybe I would have had it close to this pencil here. The, kind of the pinkish stuff. But instead, I have it right next to my uh, magenta. And that's because they are both fall within the same exact location of the color wheel. Here's the color wheel, once again. And where this falls here, you notice that the pinks, and here's the reds, you'll notice the pinks here what color do you think that is right there? Well, that there is a magenta type color. If you take a really close look there, you can see they're very close in appearance. But this 356 falls somewhere right here. Okay, because remember I got 358, I believe, when I... Uh, when I did this red, which would technically be 360 or zero. So, but it falls somewhere right here. And the pink macaroon is in the same exact location, but it's down further in the luminance right there. You can see this pinkish color right here. These two are basically very pinkish and it falls, falls right about in here. Okay, and so that is why these two fall in the same location because they are falling within the same within the same area 
of degrees around the wheel, but the difference between the magenta and the pink macaroon is not in the hue, but is in the luminance and the saturation. So if you were to add luminance, that's the L value, you're adding more brightness, then you're going to get this down here. When you dim it down, when you lower that uh, lightness and you increase that saturation, you're way up here. So this is why the two end up in the same place in my tray. If I'm ordering my tray according to the color wheel. Okay, so this is one way that you can organize your pencils and do it based on where they fall within the color wheel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.